What's up guys, that got the pencil here, and let us begin. The hour is upon us to discuss him. The sloth of the seven deadly sins, the monstrous, the fearsome, the potent, the deadly apathetic lord of the fairies, Harlequin, the third fairy king. So, King, like a lot of beginning of series sins, so just runs his fade throughout the entire early series. As soon as he shows up, he runs through another sin who so far in the series had shown himself to be extremely powerful. King vs. Bond round 1 was essentially King styling on Bond, really casually, being the only one to actually land a decisive hit. And while Bond is stopped from using Snatch, King goes on to prove that honestly it didn't even matter that much within their rematch. King easily avoids all of Bond's attacks, grabs him with his guardian, and petrifies him. Upon the revelation that he was wrong, King pulls up on Gila and casually slaps her around when three other sins while casual could not accomplish the same feat. However, King does get saved by Meliosa at the last second from an explosion. Time passes, King lectures the sins on the sacred treasure loss, and he loses the cane while limited on his power use, and he finally gets to show off again. An enhanced Jericho and a more experienced Gila slap around Bond and base Meliodas, only for King to pull up and smack around the two demon blood enhanced warriors with absolute ease. Now, King gets downplayed a lot for this next fight, where Helbrum steps up to bat and bats King around with absolute ease, and then King gets knocked out when Berserk Meliodas just lands on the field. But, to the next battle, King pulls up and fossilizes a Holy Knight and Hugo while they were fighting Demonic Dale, and he's trapped for a little bit. However, it doesn't get much better as King and his guardian sort of just get slapped up and slapped around and Meliodas has to finish the job. King then picks up some respect again when he infiltrates the kingdom after sending Diane in, and is forced to fight Helbrum once again. However, once reaffirming himself after allowing Helbrum to be down on him for a while and defending Diane, King goes on not to just dominate Helbrum, but dominate Helbrum who's been enhanced by 20 holy knights, defeating him soundly. After saying goodbye to his brother, Dreyfus attempts to blindside King and attack him, but King easily avoids him and dominates the great holy knight, threatening his life for answers. After receiving some, King joins the others in the beat up Hendrickson party, ambushing him and being forced to defeat Helbrum once again. King just vaporizes him. Then, King is not all too relevant for a while. He gets overwhelmed by Grey Demon Hendrickson, damages Meliodas and Hendrickson, and watches as Meliodas ends the fight. Afterwards, King travels to the New Fairy King's Forest, where he is hated for his long absence. However, when an Albion attacks, King is forced to stand up and fight, revealing his true power for a moment to destroy the massive threat to his home. King then slaps Gother for using Lost World on Diane, fights Meliodas over his demonic status, and then the Fairy King heads off to his resurrected sister. He protects her all the way through the Great Fight Festival, and then King is forced to fight with Diane against dangerous constructs formed by the Demonic Fairy and Giant Kings. Using his true power, King is able to slap one construct and vaporize another, and then he has to be protected by Diane and then teleport away from the Commandments who kill Meliodas. Later, Gluxenia kidnaps King and Diane, Gluxenia and Droll slap both of them, and King is sent back in time in Gluxenia's body. None of these feats really count for King though, as it's not his own body. However, upon his return, King has evolved drastically, easily handling Gother, then, upon reaching Conrad, King eviscerated not only Melascula's soldiers, but Melascula herself after Helbrum is revealed to be the one who slaughtered the people of Conrad. Melascula does hype him up here, and states that King equals Gloxinia in terms of power. Then, after Meliodas goes back to his old self and gets subdued by Escanor, King is forced to team up with Gother in order to fight Chandler in his base. King manages to fight rather on par with a weakened Chandler, and with help, manages to directly pierce the old demon and defeat him in base. However, he's then saved by Gluxenia and Droll once Chandler transforms, and King is forced to retreat with the other sins. The new holy war begins, and King easily dominates more Albions. Then King is forced to fight a transformed Esterosa, but initially he cannot do much. He's able to fight a monstrous Esterosa pretty well alongside the Archangels and Derriere, then is forced to fight the re command Mael by himself for a little bit, but then he gets support. Only to pass out from all the damage he takes from fighting three command Mael. When he awakens, he is healed and overwhelmed by four command Mael, even when he is fighting with Diane and Gother. Upon having his magic sealed away, he gets a new burst of resolve and fully grows his wings and proceeds to absolutely annihilate Four Commandment Mael with absolute ease. He doesn't stop there either, almost killing the original demon from range, fighting Zeldris, and protecting Merlin. He is then forced to protect everyone from the Demon King's storm and reverts back to his younger self by using up all his magic energy. He helps seal the Demon King away for Bond to finish him, and then King, alongside the other sins, fight Endura and win against it, along with going on to fight and defeat the Demon King with the others. He does not do much against Chaos Kath, and that is the end. So there is King's story, and all the feats throughout it. However, 
Let me explain how King managed to do so much with more than just his raw power. King has many abilities tied to his native biology, his native ability, and his native weapon. To address his biology first, King is a fairy. Due to this, he has full access to freeform flight, not needing to flap his wings to do so. He can also read the hearts of others easily just by glancing at them, which is essentially reading their mind and thoughts. Then he has his heightened sensory abilities, being able to distinguish magical signatures from many miles away. Then, he, like a lot of other fairies, has rather strong telekinesis, being able to lift massive bodies of water and small things like plants with various amounts of force. For his specific magical ability, there is Disaster. This allows him to quote-unquote control life and death. With status promotion, he's able to turn the tiniest scratch into a gaping wound, turn poison into horror toxins, minor growths into cancerous tumors, and raise and destroy forests as he pleases. He can also use his power to enhance any disabilities or limitations, such as a person like Kane's rheumatism. He can also give certain things properties, like a flower the ability to erase a certain amount of memories. On top of this, he can condense moisture, like water, into dense little bullets of pure danger. Now, from his ability to his weapon, the Spirit Spirit Chastity Fool. It has numerous forms for numerous purposes, that a king at full power can wield four of all at once, and they will repair themselves when damaged. There is a pillow, which is the basic form that Chassis will takes when not in combat. And then we get to the actual weaponry. So for form one, there is Chastiful, the literal spear, which can be used not only as a piercing weapon, but also as a saw to slice through objects and as a spinning shield to block things. Then he has Bumblebee, where he blitz rushes someone with the spear. Then the spear, when launched, can create a massive explosion upon impact with something, which allows for vaporization, and he has the Lens of Judgment, where he just drops the spear on someone with a whole ton of magic infused into it. And then there's Tyrant Tempest, where King spins Chastiful in a massive arc to destroy larger objects such as Albion. Form 2 is the Guardian, a large moss-stuffed teddy bear that grows in power and size the further it progresses through its forms. It's resistant to blunt force attacks and heat and fire attacks, but it is weak to the cold. By the end, it has multiple arms and stands around the same height, if not a bit taller than Diane. Form 3 is Fossilization, as whatever the spear cuts turns to stone. This form can also pop right out of another, such as the Guardian, allowing for combo utility. Form 4 is Sunflower, which has multiple forms and various utility. The original can fire a solid beam of energy or multiple little ones. Sunflower in its second form, its second evolution rather, is a massive flower with individual roots that can all be controlled by King while it still fires energy beams. The final one is a monster plant that has been shown to fire a massive energy beam and likely has all the abilities of the weaker forms. Form 5 is Increase, which is just small daggers, which turned into large daggers, which turned into full swords by the end, which King can control in ways to attack something, and he can finally control each one to use some as shields or to cut things finely. Then he has Fight Fire with Fire, where he just drops all the daggers onto an opponent. He can also use an alternate Bumblebee, where he attacks in a stream of daggers. Form 6 is the Igricloth, where King gets armor that actually allows him to attack physically and defend himself better. Form 7 is a sphere of light that is essentially just a flashlight. Form 8 is Pollen Garden, which acts as not only a potent shield, but also negates pain while healing all those surrounded by it. It evolves in both its defensive and healing capabilities as King progresses in power. A compact but effective group of abilities, being able to read minds, erase memories, petrify immortals, and manipulate life and death. Now, with all of this, where does King go? Well, at the beginning of the series pre Escanor, King at his full power is the second strongest sin. He scales above all his counterparts, even in base, defeating Bon, slapping Dreyfus while damaged when a fresh Gother couldn't do the same with ease, and once again, beating Dreyfus, who slapped around Gideon and Diane, and scaling above Merlin just because she doesn't have any feats that really put her around King, especially when he's wielding the true spirit spear. Meliodas scales above him because Berserk lost vain Meliodas is far superior to base Meliodas who defeated an Albion while King needed his full power to. And of course, Escanor is stronger, so once he is introduced, it makes King the third strongest sin. Relative to the rest of the world though, King is superior to all holy knights, but inferior to all the commandments, even at his maximum. After training with Bloxinia, King falls around number 4 thanks to Merlin getting feats like fighting against True Form Chandler, True Form Kusak, and Zeldras. Feats that a post-training King likely could not pull off considering he was a being that was struggling with 3 Command Mael and outright losing to 4 Command Mael pre his ascension. He still scales above base post-training Diane, post-memories Gother, and mid-series Bond thanks to slapping around Melaskula, and 
being stated near to Gloxinia or outright equal to him by Melascula, and still surviving a free commandment by L, along with a weakened base Chandler. In terms of commandments, he scales around the upper mid-tier, scaling directly to Gloxinia, fighting alongside lesser archangels, and fighting by L alongside Derriere. Now, for Full Wings King, he becomes number 3 for a short while, as he surpasses Escanor for a little bit, however, by the final Demon King fight, he falls back to number 4, falling behind True Magic Meliodas, Core Chu's Post Purgatory Bond, and Final Shine Escanor. However, relative to the rest of the verse, he's monstrous at a close range with all 4 spears. He scales above all the commandments, all 4 archangels, and pretty much every character except certain high tiers like True Magic Meliodas, Final Shine Escanor, Post Purgatory Bond, the Demon King, the Supreme Deity, Chaos, Chaos Kath, and Chaos Arthur. There are some that are debatable, like a hypothetical The One Mael, Goddess Elizabeth, and Prime Meliodas. However, the reason I will give King the credit for being stronger than them is the fact that Mael, despite still having the one available, as he's the one that points out that there's still time before noon, he was too scared to fight the Demon King at all once he realized he was at full power and left it to the Sins. For Goddess Elizabeth and Prime Mael both, neither were even able to remotely harm their parents while they themselves were destroyed by them. Meanwhile, against a full power Demon King, King was actually able to damage the Demon King and take damage from the Demon King, something that neither the Ancient Warriors can testify to. Well, they took damage, and they were still standing, Sora, but they did none back. That's the main difference. One did damage, two did none at all. The only way I can see this argued around is if you want to claim that the Demon King back then was stronger than the Demon King that the Sins fought in the present. But, if anything, it's the opposite. This present Demon King was not separated from the Ten Commandments, while he also had Zeldus' body and is noted to be at full power. That could mean that even his purgatory body power was involved, which could be likely considering the Demon King is considered fully dead once defeated by the Sins and having the commandments destroyed by Meliodas, despite his purgatory body supposedly still existing. And that would make King's feat even more impressive in comparison to them. Now, given that, where would I put King amongst the entire series? Well, he just barely scrapes into the top 10. He's weaker than the Demon King, the Supreme Deity, Chaos, Post Chaos Cath, Post Chaos Arthur, True Magic Meliodas, Ultimate One Escanor, and Post Purgatory Bond. King did require help to fight the Demon King, and the Supreme Deity is the Demon King's equal. Chaos created both of the previous strongest characters. Chaos Cath is unkillable by King and strong enough to give Chaos Arthur a run for his money, and Arthur wields the power of Chaos. While Meliodas is superior to the Supreme Deity and Demon King, Ultimate One Escanor and the One Escanor box one-on-one -on -one with the full power Demon King, and Post Purgatory Bond has the speed advantage and is relative if not superior to Full Wings King. Even with that, King is one of the mightiest beings to ever roam the Seven Deadly Sins world. King is one of my favorite characters. He had such a strong narrative based in suffering from something that he truly had little control over, if any control at all. He was a greedy king who wanted nothing but for everyone to be happy, but safe. He lost who he cared about in his friends and then lost his memories, only to fall in love and then eventually remembering his duties as king, having to sacrifice his newfound love, only to be punished for it either way by the loss of his own. When he was finally tested, finally forced to accept the fact that his friend had become a monster due to his own negligence, he had to end it all. He destroyed his friend, and he lived in darkness, he lived a lie, for years and years with his tenure with the Sins, only to come back and have to slaughter his best friend two more times, keep hiding everything from Diane, hold everything back. Thus, when he was finally freed, finally given what he wanted, I was extremely happy for him. I genuinely smiled when he promised to marry Diane in the middle of a life or death scenario, as it's what King always wanted and it's what King deserves. It was a powerful story for a powerful king. What's up guys, that got the pencil here, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, I hope you built up some respect for the boy king. He's monstrous despite his appearance, trust me. For who's next, well, dare I say, it's getting pretty bright outside. But, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. This is that got the pencil, writing off.